If you have bought a power flushing machine but are unsure how to use it, well, this video is for you, as I'll show you step-by-step -step guide on how to use power flushing machines. What does a power flushing machine do? It circulates water in your system at very high flow rates with cleaning chemicals, which allows it to pick up debris and flush out uh, any debris in your system, both magnetic and non-magnetic. Apart from using power flushing machines, there are other, other techniques of cleaning central heating systems. You can uh, do what is called a mains flush or a chemical flush, or some people use what's called a magna cleanse, uh, two magnetic filters. My opinion is that power flushing machines are way more superior to magna cleanse or to mains flush, and there's a reason behind it. The higher the velocity of water in your system, especially in radiators, the more debris you'll be able to pick up. And to give you an idea, those machines are rated up to 150 liters of flow a minute. And if you use your mains, quite often you only have 10, 12 liters available a minute, maybe, maybe 20 if you're lucky. However, if you put mains water or magna cleanse through your central heating system, the resistance of your central heating system pipe or and your boiler quite often means that at the other end of the system you're not even getting 10 liters per minute. To give you an idea, if the system has 100 liters of water, for example, this machine can change the whole water in that system within a minute. You try to do that with mains flush or magna cleanse, you'll need probably 10, maybe 20 minutes to do that. So not only will that slow the cleaning process, as well the velocity of water in your system will be much slower and you'll be picking up much less debris than if you were to use the power flashing machine. So let's have a look at this machine and I will explain exactly how it operates. So at the front of the machine we've got this valve that moves from the right to left. It reverses the flow. So if it's in this position the machine will push water through here to the system. If I reverse it it's gonna push water through here to the system. And by quickly changing the direction of this valve, we're gonna change the direction of water in the system, creating turbulence, picking up more debris. Those two valves have three positions. If they point down, this means the machine is recirculating water through the system. So right now, it's pushing through this valve down and it's coming to the machine from the system, dirty water through here. Those valves have also up positions, and when you put them in up positions, they damp water. However, to damp water from the system, you have to have this valve pointing down, because that's where the machine is pushing water to the system, and this valve pointing up, and this is taking the water out through this hose to the back, and it damps it to the drains. So, this is recirculating, this is damping water. Obviously, you can damp water in the other direction as well, but then you have to put reversive or flow valve into this direction, push water through the system through here, and then, damp water with that valve. Again, it goes through here, through the, uh, this hose to the damp hose on the back. And it also have position off. So now the valves are in off position, nothing happens. If I put this valve in this direction, it's gonna push water into the system, but on this side, the valve is shut. So what's gonna happen now, the machine will be building up pressure in the system. And it's very useful if you have to fire the boiler if the pressure switch don't make because the pressure in the system is below 0.5 bar. What you can do, you can close this valve, build the pressure up, fire the boiler and then slowly adjust how much you want to open that valve to maintain the pressure in the system. And this orange thing here on top, this is a valve that you use to turn the mains on to fill the machine with clean water. On the back of the machine, we've got four connections. An inlet for our mains water, usually connected from a garden hose or a washing machine outlet. This is damp hose that goes to the drains. That's where we're damping our dirty water from the system. And this is supply and return, supply and return, or we can call it flow and return hoses, depending how you set your reversible flow valve on the front. And when damping water, you really only have two positions. The direction of flow needs to go to the valve that points down and the other valve has to point up. Or the reverse. The valve points this way, the water goes into the system through this valve and comes out through here. If you do it this way, nothing will happen because you're pushing against a closed valve. This setup doesn't work. This works. This works. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. And obviously, if both valves are down, this works and this works. With the machine you also get this box and it's a set of hoses to make all your connection for flow, return, damp hose and they are temperature rated hoses, they look like that. A box 
of different adapters, connectors that I accumulated over the years to adapt to different systems. Filter adapters, another filter adapter that's for Fernox TF1. I've made up a lot of my own adapters for pipe work, loads of them here. And a rubber mallet to whack radiators. That's a pH tester for testing water. How do we connect our power flushing machine to power flush the system? Uh, there was a bit of a confusion on my previous videos because someone said you can't connect to flow pipe only or you can't connect to return pipe only. What you have to understand is you can connect pretty much anywhere. You can take a radiator off and connect to the valves on the radiator. You can cut into flow pipe and connect your return and flow from the machine here. Or you can cut into the return pipe work. Or in our case, we've got a filter, which is the easiest option. We're going to remove the magnet clean and connect to magnet clean valves. The machine cuts into the system and where the machine pushes water, it's flow now. And where the water comes back to the machine, that's your return now. So it's not the boiler dictating flow and return anymore. So we can cut pretty much anywhere on the system. If you were cleaning an open vent system, the system that has a header tank in the loft, you have to do two things. You have to isolate the feed to the system from the header tank and you have to cap off temporarily your safety vent. Otherwise, if you don't do that, the machine will push the water through the header tank and it will flood your property through the loft. As you can see, the system is quite dirty. Just hand tight. Now I'm taking my flow hose. So this is my new flow. That's my return and the valve on the other side is pointing that direction. We're gonna be pushing water to the boiler through the return and then the water will be coming back when recirculating through this return hose which initially we will not be using. So that is my flow and return now connected. There's two more hoses I have to connect, obviously. Mains water inlet and my damp hose. Normally you put them in the drains. For two reasons, I will connect it to the utility sink. First reason I want to show you how the water looks when we flush. And the second reason this kitchen, this utility is being replaced anyway. We don't have to be super precious about those sinks. Now I'm gonna connect my uh, outlet hose. Now I'm gonna use my toolbox to weigh it down so it doesn't run away. One more connection to do, which is mains water. I'm gonna just use short washing machine hose. So one end goes to washing machine valve under the sink, the other one goes to the machine. That's my flow and return to the machine connected and connected to the filter connections. I also have the reversible flow valve pointing in the correct direction so that will push water from the machine to the boiler and initially we're gonna be dumping all the water. So the theory is all the radiators open, if there's any bypass on the system needs to be fully closed and we are pumping clean water through the boiler into the system and we're dumping the water before it comes back to the machine. So no dirty water goes through the boiler. Obviously you have to plug it in as well to the power socket but it's on. If I press the button there is noise. We're pushing water again through this valve and we're gonna be dumping this way. That's our main water connection. If I open it, you can you hear water going into the machine? And we are only flushing in this instance through all the radiators, pushing clean water through the system, dumping dirty water on the other side. We should have water coming out on the other end here in a second. And as you can see, the system is filthy and we haven't put the chemicals in yet. So the procedure now is I'll have to keep pushing clean water to the system and wait till the water on the other side runs clean. A little longer than a few minutes later. Now that water runs relatively clean, it's time to put this valve to recirculate and I'm gonna put chemicals. That's what I'm using. It's a really strong cleaning chemical. You can only use it on boilers that do not have an aluminum heat exchanger. Intergas has aluminum on gas side, but it's copper on water side. So it's safe to use this power flushing liquid, but never use it on boilers like Worcester, Bosch or Logic. You'll, you'll destroy the heat exchanger if you use that. Use X800 on dirty systems instead or, or F5. So FX2 is excellent, but you have to be careful with it and it also needs to be neutralized and water needs to be tested later on for pH levels. I don't want to put too much of this stuff. It really is strong. Now I'm gonna turn the machine on 
turn the boiler on and turn the heating on, but I'm gonna set the boiler to 40 degrees only. Now the boiler's on, the power flashing machine is on, and as I said, I'm only setting it to about 40 degrees. Some people flash at 50 degrees. I find 40 degrees is plenty. Although the machine itself is uh, rated to 75 degrees, I've heard of instances of hoses bursting when the water was getting too hot. So be careful how hot you get your system. Now I'm gonna walk around the property and check, make sure non radiators are leaking, I don't get any problems. I still have all the radiators open and I will circulate hot water with chemicals for an hour around the property. Once all the radiators get warm, you can turn the boiler off and you can start changing the flow. I change it a few times. One hour later. I've turned the boiler off, the water has been circulating for around an hour now. But what you do after an hour, you turn all the radiators apart for one. And then circulate water just through one radiator for around five minutes, changing the flow a few times as well. And you will be able to hear them crazy amounts of water going through that radiators. You want to create turbulence by moving this valve on and off, on and off. I'm gonna turn all the rats apart for one off now and I'll show you what kind of flow goes through that radiator. There's a full flow of the machine going through only one radiator right now. What I'm gonna do now is set my timer, run it for five minutes, reversing the flow two, three times. Then close this radiator, go to the next radiator and next radiator. I'm not dumping any water, I'm still circulating water with chemicals through every single radiator. So what has just happened here? I was flushing through this radiator only and I noticed that the valve was leaking from the top and quite often you can just tighten the top of the valve to stop the leak. The blooming thing snapped inside causing massive leak. Now I didn't have time to drain the system nor did I want to do it because I didn't want to waste all the chemicals in the radiators. So what I did, I stopped the power flashing machine, I put all the valves for recirculation or left them in place that dropped the pressure in the system and all I had to deal with was the water in this radiator and a bit of water in the pipe work. So I took the wet vac and quickly changed the valve. Once you've done all the radiators one by one, flashing through them, you leave the last radiator open, go to your machine, open the damp valve, opposite to the direction of flow, so we're pushing water that way and we're damping water here. We're gonna turn the machine back on and open the fill valve, introduce clean water back to the system, to flush all the chemicals out from the last radiator. While we do that, while we flush those radiators, we can take a rubber mallet and knock radiators to help dislodge more dirt. So I'm gonna keep flushing through this last radiator till I get a clean water in the outlet hose. Once the water runs clean, I will move to another radiator. As you can see, the water is mighty dirty. And you will also notice that the first radiator takes the longest time to clear out because it also clears whole flow and return pipe work at the same time. First radiator water runs clear. So I can turn that radiator off and you'll see that as soon as I turn another radiator the water will get dirty again. That's radiator number three, pretty dirty as well. And you carry on like that till you get to the last radiator. Once you've got all the radiators uh, cleared out and there's clean water coming from every single radiator, it's time to open all the radiators. And this step is only to be done if you're using acidic cleaners, you have to neutralize the system. You can use neutralizing powder as this one from Camco or neutralizing liquid. I went around now and turned all the radiators on. I'm gonna set it back to recirculate. So it's gonna circulate water through the system. We're not dumping any water anymore. I'm gonna put neutralizing crystals into the machine. Make sure my water levels are okay and turn it on. Once you turn it on, you circulate it through the radiators for a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And as soon as you get circulation through all the radiators, you reverse flow a few times you dump all that uh, alkaline water and you have to test the water at the outlet with either a pH meter or testing papers. Once you've circulated water for let's say 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe and you confirmed you have circulation on all the radiators by turning the boiler on central heating for a while it's time to start dumping that water and we're gonna be testing pH levels of that water using pH testing papers. 
The way I do it, I take, I take a bit of paper, tear it off, test it on mains water, put it aside and then try to match the same color with my outlet coming from the hose. But I will probably start flashing it for about 10 minutes, so damping water for 10 minutes before I even attempt testing, because I know it's going to be alkaline. I do it with all the radiators on now. There is no need to go radiator by radiator individually now. You can leave the whole central heating turned on, provided you get circulation through all the radiators. Once the water starts running clear from our outlet from the system, you have to test for two things. Dissolved solids in water. You can use a TDS meter, total dissolved solids. I don't have one, I never needed one. Or you can use turbidity tube, if I pronounce it correctly. It's a glass tube that you put water in and you look down on it and you see how dirty the water is. Or you can do what I do and make one from two water bottles. So in the right hand side I've got a tap water from here. You look from the top at it. And in the other one I've got a system water and I compare them. When they start to look similar, looking from the top, I know the system is clean. That would be the power flash completed. All that's left to do is to put the filter back on the system and put some inhibitors. What's left to do now is to pressurize the system, go around the property, bleed all the radiators, turn central heating on and make sure we've got circulation everywhere. If you're interested in the video where I install this boiler, how I change a vented system into combi system, I'm gonna post a link to that video here so you can watch it now. As well, if you want to know how to fully commission an intergas boiler, I'm gonna post another link to that video right here. Thank you for watching and two more videos for you here.